Hello everyone. Today we'll be working through goodie bag three, which is on ionic solids. In order to work through this goodie bag, you'll need a conductivity meter, some small measuring cups, some medium sized cups, a small scale, a writing utensil, some nitro gloves, some stirs, and four unique solids. Today I'll be using sodium chloride, magnesium sulfate, magnesium oxide, and sucrose. Our main objective today is to use solubility and conductivity measurements to determine if a given solid is an ionic or covalent compound. And as we do this, I'd like you to think about two questions. First, how do solids dissolve in water? And second, what factors may influence how conductive a given solid is in water? So first, we're gonna look at the solubility of our solids in water. And to do this, we're gonna dissolve one gram of each solid in 30 milliliters of water. I've already weighed out my solids here and I've also already weighed out my water. Notice how I'm wearing a pair of nitro gloves. The compounds that I'm working with today aren't that dangerous, but just as general safety, it's good to wear gloves when handling compounds. So I'm gonna pour each solute into each respective cup of water and stir and mix for about a minute to two minutes and see if the compound dissolves. So after one to two minutes of stirring and dissolving, you can see that our magnesium oxide right here has not dissolved in our water. You can see a very clear boundary between the solute, which is settled at the bottom of the cup, and the water, which is on top. If you compare that to our sodium chloride, though, if you look very carefully, you can see that our solute has dissolved very well in our water. So the next thing we'll be doing is measuring the conductivity of our compounds when dissolved in water. And to do that, we're going to be using a handy dandy conductivity meter that I have right here. So I have some cups of water prepared here um, to be used as both a baseline correction when we're measuring our conductivity uh, of our compounds and uh, as a water bath to clean our probe in between measurements. Okay, so first I'm going to turn on my conductivity measure. And I'm going to make sure that my units are set to micro siemens per centimeter or some equivalent unit. And first I'm gonna measure a baseline uh, of just regular water here. I have tap water here. And so when I do that, I see that I'm measuring around 900 microsiemens per centimeter. So that is the conductivity of my water as is, and I'm gonna use that as a baseline when I'm measuring the conductivity of my other compounds. Okay. So since this is water, it's already clean, and now I'm gonna measure my sodium chloride, which is right here. So this. And so right now I'm reading around 4,700 microsiemens per centimeter for my sodium chloride. I'm gonna take note of that. And eventually when I'm collecting my data, I'm gonna subtract my water baseline from this value here. Make sure in between each measurement that you dip the probe in a water bath to clean it, and you can continue on with the rest of your measurements. So the last experiment we're gonna to do today is to measure the solubility of our compounds in water except with two grams instead of one gram. So I've measured out an additional one gram of each solid here, and I'm just gonna pour each one into each respective cup, mix and stir, and after one to two minutes, I'm gonna see if each compound is dissolved. So again, we have our magnesium oxide after round two of solubility. Again, we can see that our solute has not dissolved in water. There's a very clear boundary between the water on top and the solute on the bottom. So in this case, round one of solubility and round two of solubility look identical, but it may not be the case for our other three solutes. All right, so now that we've finished our last solubility test, let's put all our data, our first solubility test, our conductivity test, and our second solubility test on the board. So here we have a chart of all the data from our experiments. I have the compounds that we use going down right here, and I have solubility here at one gram and two grams, and conductivity after water subtraction here. So before going into this data, first thing I would like us to notice is that for sodium chloride and for mag uh, magnesium sulfate, these conductivity values are much lower than I expected. Um, this should be closer to 10,000 microsiemens, and this should be closer to 8,000 microsiemens per centimeter. Um, but the fact that we're able to measure conductivity for these respective compounds uh, gives us insight into what type of compounds they are. So first, if we look at sodium chloride, we can see that at both one gram and two grams, um, our sodium chloride was able to dissolve in water, and we're able to measure conductivity readings for this. This means our sodium chloride was able to dissociate into ions when dissolved in water, and this is an extra check for us to determine that sodium chloride is indeed an ionic compound. 
Next, we can look at magnesium oxide, and we can see that for magnesium oxide, at one gram and two grams, we weren't, we weren't able to dissolve our magnesium oxide in water. And not only that, because of that, we weren't able to measure any conductivity. But we know that magnesium oxide is an ionic compound just from our understanding of bonding. So we have to think more closely about why this is the case. So magnesium oxide and sodium chloride are both ionic compounds, but magnesium oxide has a much higher lattice energy than sodium chloride. This means that when magnesium oxide is placed in water, uh, it's more energetically favorable for it to stay as uh, a solid than it is to disassociate into ions of magnesium and oxygen. So magnesium oxide is still um, an ionic compound, but its lattice energy is high enough for, such that it does not dissolve and does not give us conductivity measurements. So it's still ionic. Now we can look at magnesium sulfate, and we see that for one gram, we do get some solubility, and at two grams, we get uh, no solubility, it was not able to dissolve, and we're able to measure some conductivity. This means that magnesium sulfate dissociated into respective ions, and we're able to measure some conductivity well in water. But magnesium sulfate has a limited solubility in water, which is why at two grams, it wasn't able to dissolve completely. So magnesium sulfate is still an ionic compound. Finally, if we look at sucrose, we see that we're able to get one gram of sucrose to dissolve in water and two grams of sucrose was able to dissolve in water. But we were not able to get any conductivity. This means that sucrose dissolved in water but did not dissociate into respective ions. So if you think about the structure of sucrose, sucrose uh, has a bunch of non, uh, excuse me, has, has a bunch of polar groups on it, um, which make it able to dissolve in water. But sucrose does not dissociate into ions, which is why we were not able to measure any conductivity. So sucrose is a covalent compound. So by using our knowledge of bonding and our solubility and conductivity data, we're able to affirm the identity of our compounds. That is, whether or not they are ionic or covalent. So today we looked at how the type and strength of bonding of a solid influences its properties. Specifically, we looked at how these aspects of bonding influence the solubility and conductivity of these solids in water.